Hey guys, welcome to this episode called What's on the Bench. Now, I started off this morning thinking I was going to shoot an episode called Assembly Line, which I'm going to shoot after this one. Uh, but I started looking around all the different things I got going on. I started no noticing numeric patterns. And there's like, just a, there's either four or two of what I need. And it's either prompting me to build four things or wish I would have ordered parts to complete the other two so I would have four. Now, y'all know me that I, I like to build individual instruments. Uh, I don't like to mass produce things. I really dislike going to festivals and seeing these really cheap products with a fish and wire strings and watching people drunk buy them up and then I don't know whatever happens to them. I, I don't even think they make good firewood. If you're one of them people that does that, I don't know, you might be a metric hater, a deck screw hater, or whatever. Just give me the diss I can get it over with. Now, going into this episode, I want to tell you about a couple things. First off, the background music is C6 Steve. This is a vinyl and it was recorded at Jack White's Third Man Record Studio. This is good stuff. It's got Luther Dickinson on it. Um, I went to see Luther Dickinson the other night in Los Angeles, and what do you know, C6 Steve was sitting there. It's very hard to find him in the United States. He's all over Europe. He fills stadiums and all pink pop and all that, but it's very hard to find him here. I saw him once in Solano Beach about four years ago, but anyway, I looked up on the stage. There he is. Hey, look at that. Paul Miro, Junk Pile Guitar. Ain't that cool? Well, it's even cooler when C6 Steve signed it again. He did my first guitar, um, and I think I did an episode called Don't Blow Your Top. It tells you about string height stuff. Anyway, I'm going to give you a link up there. But once again, um, music this time, C6 Steve, a live album recorded at Jack White's Third Man Records. Now, I guess there's been a couple of additions. Uh, I don't want to get into details about how they were added. But there have been a couple additions to the Cigar Boss Guitar World. Recently, twins were born to the family of the infamous Kyle D. Lewis. And uh, hey, Kyle, congratulations on Serenity and Stormy, your new twin granddaughters. Everybody wave. Hi. Don't scare the baby, people. I just got this guitar um, it's a real guitar it has six strings um, I don't know what to do with it but it's cool and it's got a steel body and it's Gretsch I think that um, Tim Lohman of Low Volts has a Gretsch guitar I think other people have Gretsch guitars I think they're a good guitar Tammy tries to steal this one from me but I got it at Guitar Center in Palm Desert from store manager Taylon Reed. Remember that name. Now you might not be able to get a hold of him right away because he's probably still in the hospital. I heard him really bad when I beat him down on the price. He didn't make no money off of this, but you need to go to Palm Desert. That's in California. You'll know if you're in the right place. It was July and August and it's 122 degrees. He does have air conditioning there and you need to spend your money there because I'm almost feeling guilty about how I robbed him on the price of this. But someday, Taylor Reed will be like, you know what, I sold him the guitar to put him on the map. So go see Taylor Reed Guitar Center, Palm Desert, California. I'll give you a link below. Maybe you can just order stuff wherever you're at and have them ship it to you. Come on, help the guy out, would you? All right, remember that episode I had called Engine Bread? And your bread episode up there, the one that nobody watched, and then they were all sad, the ones that didn't watch, because remember the episode about Reuben Lacey, and there was a question that you could win this, and nobody watched it, and you had to know what was the recommended baking mileage for engine bread. The answer was 145 miles. Well, guess what? Got to make sure I get this right. Richard Scott Davis. I'm glad I went to school in Wisconsin so I can remember that stuff. Hey, Richard Scott Davis won this. Do not 
covet Richard Scott Davis. Oh, really? That's what sucks about battery operated lights. I got somebody in some language telling me, is that you, Richard Scott Davis? Don't worry, I'll get this in the mail, dude. But anyway, he won. Don't try to win. But one of the first projects I'm going to show you is I'm making a few more of these. So let's hit the bench after you subscribe. Oh, really? So let's go to the bench and I'll show you what I got going on. Okay, guys. Project first is related to this one. Richard Scott Davis again coming your way. Rube Lacey on the back. Rube Lacey was an ex-blues man. Used to play slide guitar. Sun House when he was a preacher. Heard him. Cussed him. Then Sun House actually uh, became a blues man. Used a slide. And what's going on here is in 1943 Sun House disappeared from Mississippi. Uh, went up to New York and he was discovered in New York in 1964. So you got 1960 or 43, 1964. Then Alan Wilson, a canned heat, um, uh, helped his son learn how to replay his songs. This board actually came from the house where Alan Wilson died. And then I went up and found Reuben Lacey's church, who was the beginning of all this before he went religious, and found this bottleneck in a dump. So if you find yourself coveting winner Richard Scott Davis, not to worry, because I'm making four more of these. And you notice I have four bottlenecks that come out of the can dump behind Reuben Lacey's church. I have 63 and, or 64 and 43 nickels. And of course, I made the graphic of this. So, um, if you have to have any of this stuff you see, except for the largest stick pins in the world, forget about that. There ain't no way you can have that. Um, this Kentucky license plate, nope. Um, knock or loose. I think Kyle D. Lewis will be able to shed some light on that. Look at these Sky Zephyr cards. Remember? The history lesson about Margaret Garrett's Sky Zephyr guitar. Hey, I'm going to give you a link up there. But I got a couple more of these. Good stuff going on in the background here. Oh, by the way, I actually do have a turntable going with the C6 Steve album on it. So, um, I just mentioned canned heat. Um, yeah, this is like canned heat. Did you know that? Um... In fact, let's have a word from our sponsor. All right. You know what this is? Yeah, this is Sterno. This is called Canned Heat. And back in the old days, Canned Heat Blues came from people who couldn't afford alcohol but were drinking Sterno. Okay, so now, what has this got to do with anything? Well, I got Canned Heat at the old house of Canned Heat behind me, and I got these spoons that I bought for cheap at the Topanga General Store, whatever it is. And I'm gonna throw these in the water here and make sure that these spoons, which you're gonna see in an upcoming episode, are, uh, they also been at the house of canned heat where canned heat has been. This is kind of like that picture in Pink Floyd Umaguma where all the mirrors that like goes on for eternity. So canned heat, canned heat, canned heat, canned heat. Anyway, back to reality. All right. Being the workaholic that I am, well, I got my slide cutter out. You know I love these blue slides, so once I get these cut out of Reuben Lacey's can dump, I'm going to go ahead and make some more of these. I don't think I'm going to let anybody have these. But again, if you've got to have something, get your money out and send me an email. Next, this is really cool. I like this. Do you remember when I went to Reuben Lacey's church and I... I did a rubbing, a graphite rubbing over the dedication plaque of the church. And there's Reuben Lacey right there. Well, I took this. This is the original mounted on a piece of wood. But before I did that, I had this scanned and digitized because if I can shrink this down, wouldn't this be cool on the back of a, of a um, I don't know, maybe a sun house? themed a cigar box guitar license plate guitar but anyway I want you to know that I went ahead and got four digital copies my lighting crew sucks but yeah there they are got four of them again if you see something you just can't live without you get your wallet out 
and send me an email. I'm happy to take your money. All right, next. Do not covet my Maxwell House cans. I'm running low, but I got some coffee can guitars in the mix. And you'll remember, I showed you how to make a template. Remember this template where you just find that seam? Look at that. Um, and you put this in the middle of the seam, like so. And then you just trace around there. And, it, and then you flip it over as long as that's lined up like that. And you just trace there. And then it gives you the perfect notch how to cut it out. Um, and of course we had this one that once you line that up again with that seam line right there it tells you where to drill the holes to keep the neck attached to the can now I am running short here but um, you know what I can't find you remember Folgers you remember Mrs. Olson from the 1960s yeah Mrs. Olson I mean I like to get my hands on a couple of Mrs. Olson's cans, you know what I mean? All right, man, now we're gonna be talking about license plate guitars. You've seen me do a few of these. This is a kit that I've got from um, John Sawyer. Uh, I'll give you a link below. They work out pretty good. MGB makes a kit for a license plate that's bigger and has um, anywhere, there's more body to it. Um, I got episodes on, on both of them. You find, uh, look on my channel for license plate guitars, but I got two of these kits. Unfortunately, I have four Mississippi house, like sun house. I like this. So we're gonna put, look, there's one from 1958. There's one from 1960. This one's as old as me, but I look way better than that, at least I think so. I have to have my eyes checked. And there's another one, but um, these are gonna be sun house themed guitars. And, um, They'll go to festivals. I want to give a shout out to my friend Amy Verdon. She's in either New York City or Mississippi or God knows where she is. But she does a lot to promote the, the old blues players that are left. But anyway, that's what I got going on. Check this out. I did a, a license plate guitar, an Oklahoma license plate guitar last year uh, for the Woody Guthrie Festival. And this was the logo that the volunteers got at the Woody Guthrie Festival. Look at that. I got four of those too. All right, and then finally, I got this piece of wood here. That looks a lot like I could make some headstocks out of. Hey, I did an episode called Headstocks 101. You probably want to check that out. Uh, I have four lengths of neck board here. And what do you know? I have four finger boards. So the next episode that you're going to see is called Assembly Line. I'm going to teach you how to take this jig I, I had an episode here I stole this idea from Darren Dukes and um, worked out pretty good for me you set it on the chop saw and you can blow out headstocks uh, and scarf joint cuts on your neck boards uh, but we're just going to figure out how to do this and use a couple other uh, templates like this one you know how I put pegs in to strengthen the scarf joint stuff like that but anyway I need to start working on these because these got to match up with those festival guitars. So, hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a like. And one more time, C6 Steve live at Third Man Records. I will see you soon.